Hey, Sim fans, Sim Fanatic here. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 using the Pimax Crystal Super, you already know how stunning this headset looks. But you may also know how demanding it can be on your system. Now, in today's video, I'm going to show you one of the easiest and most effective ways to boost performance, and that's by enabling what's called foveated rendering. Now, we'll cover what it is, how to configure it in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, how to double check your settings in Pimax Play, and then we'll do a real performance comparison with it turned off versus being turned on. So first, what exactly is foveated rendering? Now, foveated rendering is a performance optimization technique used in VR. It works by rendering full resolution only where your eyes are focused and lowering the resolution in your peripheral vision. Now, that's areas where your eyes naturally see less detail anyway. So now on the Pimax Crystal Super, this is especially powerful because the headset uses eye tracking. That means the system knows exactly where you're looking in real time and dynamically shifts the highest detail to that spot. The end result, higher FPS, smoother motion, less GPU load, and usually no noticeable loss in visual quality. Now, if configured properly, most people won't even realize it's enabled. They'll just notice smoother flying. Now, I must say the Pimax Crystal Super does an incredible job with eye tracking. In fact, this is really where this headset shines when you take advantage of the foveated rendering, which makes it stand out against other VR headsets. Okay, let's start by looking at how you configure foveated rendering in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's start inside the simulator itself in 2024. We'll click on the gear cog in the upper right. And then we're gonna to go to the VR tab and then down to where it says foveated rendering state. Now, rendering needs to be turned on first by checking that box. And then you can start at either 35, go down to 20 or go up to 50. By default, it will start at 50. And the global rendering quality you wanna to set to medium. I would at least suggest starting there. And once you have those set, hit save and back and then get back into your simulator. And that's all there is to it, pretty easy. So one additional thing I wanna note is when you're choosing your global rendering, you have the options of off, low, medium, or high. The reason I recommend starting with medium is this usually gives the best balance between performance gains and visual quality, especially on high resolution headsets like the Crystal Super. Oh, and uh, make sure you apply the changes and restart the sim if you're prompted. Restarting is important to make sure the settings fully take effect. Okay, now let's jump into making sure we have foveated rendering configured in Pimax Play. First, what is Pimax Play? Well, it is the central software used to configure and optimize your Pimax VR headsets, like the Crystal Super. It manages performance, visuals, eye tracking, and compatibility with VR platforms like OpenXR and SteamVR. And for this video, most importantly, the foveated settings. So what you're gonna first do is you're gonna open Pimax Play and make sure your Crystal Super is selected. You're gonna go into device settings and then first confirm that eye tracking is enabled. Foveated rendering depends on it. Now, if eye tracking calibration is off, foveated rendering won't work correctly. So take the extra time to run the eye tracking calibration if you haven't already. Now, this next step is important to make sure that you have foveated rendering turned on. So as you saw, I clicked on games on the left-hand side there in Pimax Play, and then you wanna scroll down to where it shows quad views. Right there you see dynamic foveated rendering. Um, and you can see that uh, there's a description there for how foveated works, or the quad views work, how it can help with your peripheral views and interviews, and just make performance increase, as you can see there. Um, and then you have selections here. I have mine at balance, but you can do performance, balance, quality, ultra, customize, but balanced is what I started with. But you can tweak that and play around with it to see what works for you. And make sure you apply at the end. Okay, friends, now comes the fun part the comparison to see how much performance boost you can get with having foveated settings turned on. Specifically, we're looking at the Pimax Super, but you can also apply this for other VR headsets. But again, with the Pimax Crystal Super, this is where it's gonna really shine in the amazing eye tracking uh, feature set that it has within the headset. Okay, to really see what kind of difference this makes, we need numbers, right? So Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, there is a way to show the FPS counter, and this is how you do it. Okay, just click on your cog in the upper right-hand corner, and then you're gonna click on Advanced, 
options right there. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to turn on that developer mode. That'll give you the developer tool bar at the top and you'll go to debug. And in there you can display FPS and that's it. You're ready to go. Okay. For the testing, we're going to go to Ames, Iowa or KAMW. And then we're going to do a preset for flight conditions. We'll do daytime and then we're going to go to few clouds. And I recommend doing this for all your testing. Make sure you're at the same airport, the same time of day, the same kind of weather for consistency sake, if you really want to get a true test on your system. So now the first thing we need to do is baseline this thing. So I got to actually turn my foveated rendering off because it's been on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. So we're just going to go to the foveated rendering here and uncheck that item there. And once that is done, we want to save and close to keep those settings. Okay, now you can see that that has been disabled. You can see the performance impact it has. We're starting at a baseline of about 31 to 32, maybe 32 and a half, 33 frames per second. Um, and so just looking around the cockpit here, it's staying steady at around 32 frames per second, roughly. Okay, now we're gonna go out. And as you can see here, I'm using my controller, one of the controllers that comes with the Pimax Crystal Super. And I'm gonna set my VR settings and we're gonna go ahead and enable foveated settings just by checking that box. Okay, so once you have that set, notice here too about foveated rendering scale. I'm gonna get back to that, that's a 35, but make sure you do save and close. And then we'll go ahead and jump back in the aircraft and see how this affects performance. And as you can see, that FPS just shoots up. We're right around 55 to maybe 56, 57, a little in the lower upper 40s, lower 50s, mid 50s, and upper 50s. And it's gonna stabilize here as we look around the aircraft at the back seat. We're even hitting maybe 59 um, and 60, but it's, uh, it looks like we're sticking right around on average 50, probably about mid 50s there. So, you know, going from 31 or 32 to 55, you can do the math and that is a nice increase in boost in performance. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the VR settings and we are going to play around with the foveated rendering scale. Now, the other thing to note is I have global rendering scale as medium. And then I'm also using DLSS in performance mode. So do pay attention to that so you can change those settings depending on the graphics card you have. But we're gonna move this up slider up to 50 and enable it. Now what I wanna show you is the rendering scale and the difference this makes. It does have an impact. So if we go back into the cockpit here, now you can see by enabling that and turning that scale up to 50, the performance impact it has. And by the way, when you enable foveated rendering, you will by default in Microsoft Flight Simulator have that automatically set to 50. So I wanted to show here the impact performance just on the scale, having it set to 50 actually does for the scale. Okay, so now you might be wondering, what if we take that scale and bring it all the way down to 20? What impact will that have? Now it has a serious impact on the resolution as you can see here. And by the way, the representation within the VR headset isn't fully representing what you're seeing here. Um, but like when I turn that down, even in the VR headset with the eye tracking, it is very pixelated and you lose a lot of that higher resolution quality. And as you can see by the uh, frame rates, you really aren't getting that much uh, increase in performance. In fact, I don't think for my setup, you see any difference in performance at all between having the rendering scale from 20 to 35 and you get a vastly better performance and visual quality at 35. I think that's a sweet spot, at least for my setup. Oh, and speaking of my setup, I guess you all might be wondering, Symphonetic, what are you running for a PC build? So I am running an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D for my CPU. My GPU, I'm running an Asus TUF 4070 Ti Super. And for memory, I've got 64 gigs of G-Skill Trident 6000 MT. And for storage, I am running a two terabyte Samsung 990 Pro NVMe drive. All right, so in summary, by enabling foveated rendering and having your rendering scale tweaked to what works best for your setup, again, it's gonna be different for everybody. But as you can see, for me, my sweet spot was at 35 on the rendering scale. And by doing this, you can get anywhere from 75% or more boost in frame rates just by enabling the foveated rendering and tweaking that scale. Now again, with the Pimax Crystal Super, with the amazing eye tracking, it's a great advantage of this headset. You can also do some tweaking with the uh, Pimax Crystal Light 
and other VR headsets, but for the Pimax Crystal Super that we're looking at here, it truly makes a huge world of difference. Okay, a couple quick bonus tips before we wrap up. Now, foveated rendering works best when paired with reasonable render scale settings, as I just showed in the video. So don't max everything out and expect miracles. Uh, if you notice shimmering or blurry edges in your peripheral vision, try stepping down one foveated rendering level at a time. Now, always test changes at the same airport and weather conditions, as I mentioned, for accurate comparisons. And remember, every system is different, so use this as a tuning tool, not a one-size-fits-all setting. So that's how you can squeeze more performance out of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 using foveated rendering on the Pimax Crystal Super. Now, if this video helped you, please make sure to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what kind of performance gains you're seeing on your system. And thanks for watching, friends. That's it for now. But please stay tuned for more videos, more content, and live streams with us all flying together. And until next time, stay safe, take care, and of course, Blue skies, we'll see you soon.